this helps, but let me know if you have any questions in the comments. So question one, we've got multiple choice questions. So in the diagram below, ABC is parallel to DEF. So they're just telling us these two lines are parallel. Then DEB is 70, so that's this angle. F is 40, that's this angle. And ABE is X. They're just telling us these angles, okay? And then they want us to solve for um, X and Y. So let's get a different color pen. So, first of all, I would say X, I'm going to use co-interior angles. So I'm going to use that U shape, okay, because we know these lines are parallel. So we can say then this plus this will give us 180. Okay, so 70 plus X would have to be 110. Okay, so that would give us 180 in that U shape. And then for the Y, I'm going to go really straightforward and just say Y, we can use alternate angles, that Z shape. So Y is going to be 40. Okay, so that means our first answer, Y is 40, X is 110. Then we've got 1.2. So we've got a quadrilateral is given here. And they say to us then, um, which statement below best describes this quadrilateral? So there's a few. So it could be a kite, it could be a rhombus, it could be a square, and we need to decide which of them is the best fit for it. So what I'm gonna go straight away is for a kite, we can't just have that. That's not enough to prove it is a kite. And for a rhombus, it's not enough to just say that. Okay, so already we've limited it. Because we know a kite and a rhombus, you need quite a few things to be able to prove it, okay? So what we can then say, also for a square, we need a few things. Because usually for a square, for a kite, for a rhombus, you need to actually have um, something about that diagonals, something about parallel lines, something about the sides being equal, something about the angles being equal. So we can already say just from that, that those, they haven't given us enough to prove those. What we do have is B, they tell us we know it's a rhombus because these lines are perpendicular and because all the sides are equal. And that is enough to prove a rhombus. Okay. Um, so if you were really stuck on that one, I would say look at the um, statements that they give you and check because usually we need quite a lot to be able to prove something is definitely a square, definitely a kite. Um, question 1.3. We have a few triangles here and they want us to work out the area of A, D, C. Okay, so they want us to work out the area of this triangle here, A, D, C. Okay, so the area of a triangle is always half times base times the height. So we always want the perpendicular height. So we're gonna say half, times the base here, which is five centimeters. We can see that is the base. And then the height is this four centimeters. They've just thrown a whole bunch of other stuff in here to try confuse us, but that's all we need. So we're just gonna say five times four is 20 times a half is 10. So we can have 10 centimeters squared. And so our answer for this one is B. Um, if we look then at 1.4, so they say here in the diagram below, A1 is equal to A2, and then B is equal to C, so those angles. And they want us then to use this fact to see what we can tell about these triangles. Okay, so we've got either they are congruent because of angle, 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 or they are similar. Okay, so this one means congruent this one means similar. Okay, so if they're congruent, they're exactly the same shape. So I'm gonna say these look pretty much like the same shape. So I'm gonna look more at the congruent ones. So let's cross out the similar ones. That means it can't be this one and it can't be this one. And now we've got a 50% 50, 50 chance of getting it right. So for congruency, we usually have, um, it could be all the sides are equal, could be side, angle, side. 
It could be angle, side, angle. Could be angle, angle, side. Um, so for congruency then, we are going to check, but this angle, 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 that does not prove, that proves that they are similar, so it can't be that one. And so we can say C, because if we just mark out what we've got here, we have got an angle that's the same in both, an angle that's the same in both, and then this side here, it is the same for both of them, okay, because it's literally the same line. Okay, so we can say that is the same length for both of them. So that means these triangles are congruent, so they're exactly the same shape. And the reason is angle, angle, side. Okay, so I'd say that is a pretty good way of going about it. So if you see these shapes, if they look like they're basically the same shape, you could say, okay, I'm pretty sure they're congruent. Let's just check I've got the right reasoning. If you can see they're different sizes, then try prove that they're similar then. So then you're going to be looking for, if you were thinking they're similar, you're going to be looking for, are all the angles the same? So angle, 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 or are all the sides in proportion? And then 1.5, the last multiple choice question. We've got this point on the Cartesian plane, and they want to know what are the coordinates of the image if it is reflected across the y-axis. So if we reflect a point over the y-axis, means we're going to take it over the y-axis like that. OK, let's draw this point. You put an apostrophe just to show that it's been reflected. And then what happens is if you're going over the y, the x value changes. So instead of minus 5, we have positive 5, which makes sense because this is the positive 5x there. But the y value is exactly the same. It was at a height of 3. It's still at a height of 3. OK, so that is what happens when you reflect. So if you reflect over the y, only the x value changes. And so we've got 5 and 3. OK, it would be the same. If they told you reflect it over the x, if you reflect over the x, only the y value changes. OK, question 2. We've got lots of proving and giving reasons and giving statements. So let's have a look here. So first of all, we need to give a reason for ABFI being a parallelogram. So we can see here, actually, this A, let me just mark these corners, A, B, F, and I. We can see immediately that it is a parallelogram because they've shown us that these sides are parallel to each other and these sides are parallel to each other. So we can say opposite sides of quad are parallel okay that and that is enough so if you know that the opposite sides are parallel to each other we know it's parallelogram okay then they want us to give a reason so a plus i is 180 so let's just have a look at this so a angle a plus i is 180 my reason would be if we look at this we've got a u shape in there Okay, so we can use our U shape is co-interior angles. So in co-interior angles, the two angles equal 180. Okay, so that would be my reason. So co-interior angles. Remember, when you use co-interior angles, you have to give the parallel lines. So we can say AB is parallel to IF. Then they say H2 is equal to what angle? So H2 is this angle in here and h2 is equal to h4 the reason for that would be vertical opposite angles we can see they actually gave that to us so that would be our clue then they say angle kfe so let's check so kfe okay so that is this angle in here so angle kfe is equal to angle I. Okay, so the reason for this is because, um, let's get some space here, this is getting chaotic. <laughs> um, so, if we were to do co-interior angles, so that U shape again, if we did the U shape again, we are going to get this plus this add up to 180 so we could work that out and then we could do angles on a straight line to get this line so we are going to say actually that exterior angle 
of a parallelogram. And then finally, angle G is equal to A2, and that is actually, I think it's going to be alternate angles. So A2, we can see, is equal to G. So this angle in here is equal to A2. So that's going to be alternate angles. And then we're just remembering, we always need to give the lines that are parallel. So in this case, it's AI is parallel to BG. Okay, so I would say in a question like this, it's really intimidating. Maybe you don't know all of them, but just write down as much as you can. Try get as many marks as you can, because it's a nice, easy five marker, even if you only get three of the marks. Okay, then 2.2. .2, so they tell us S3 is X. Okay, so that is equal to double S2. So we could say then S2 is half of that. So it's half X. And S1 is 3 of S2. So it's going to be 3 over 2X. Calculate the value of X. Okay, so first of all, we know if we add all of these up, we get 180. We know that because angles on a straight line add up to 180. So that's going to be a reason. Angles, straight line, add up to 180. So S3 is X. So we said S2 is half of that. So it's half X. And S1 is 3 times that. So 3 over 2X. So then we can add them all up. So X plus a half x plus 3 over 2x is equal to 180. All we need to do then is solve for x. So let me just get some space here. So we're going to go x plus a half x plus 3 over 2x is equal to 180. So 1 plus a half is 1 and a half plus 3 over 2 is actually going to be, we're going to end up with 6 over 2. So you can put that in your calculator. And then 6 divided by 2 is just 3. So 3x three is 180. And then we can divide by 3. So we take the 3 across. So x, so 180 divided by 3. So x is going to be 60 degrees. Okay, and then 2.3. I think that is the last question we need to do still is just lots of calculations. So first of all, they want us to calculate the size of B3. So we're trying to calculate the size of this one here. Um, what I would do is I would work out angle P1 here. So we can use angles on a straight line. Okay, so let's say P1 is 180 minus 110, which is 70 degrees, angles on a straight line. Okay, let's fill that in then. Apologies for the noise in the background. Okay, so that is 70. The reason why I did that is now we can use this triangle. So we can say in this triangle, we've got this angle, we've got this angle, we just need to work out B3. So B3 is equal to 180 minus 35 minus 70, that's angles in a triangle, Sorry. also add up to 180 degrees, and so we are going to get, let's work that out, 180, take away 35, take away 70, so B3 is going to be 75 degrees. Okay. Um, you could what you what I would usually do in the exam is I would work out as many angles as I could and then I would start putting it into here. So before you make a mess of that little box, work out everything you can and then you can put it down with the proper reasons. Then they want us to work out B5. Okay, so let's just put this in. So we said this is 75. We can also, I think we can use some alternate angles here. So let's have a look. We can possibly say... Um, 
here. So we can use the Z shape here. So we can say that's 35. So this is also 35. Okay, that's with alternate angles. Let's actually put that down as our reason because we're going to need that. So we can say B2 is 35. Our reason is alternate angles. Remember, we always have to give the parallel lines. So we've got FG is parallel to JM. Um, then we can use angles on a straight line to work out then what B4 is. So B4 is 180, take away 35, take away 75. Let's check what that is, 180, take away 35, take away 75, we are going to end up with 70, that is angles on a straight line, that's equal to 180 degrees, okay, and then let's fill that in. So this is 70. The reason why I'm working out all these B angles is because I reckon we can actually, if we can find enough, we can use angles around a point to find B5. So I'm then going to do angles on a straight line again, going in this direction, so we can work out what B1 is. There did not be there's enough space here. So B1, potentially there is a quicker method, so if you have some other method, that's fine. So B1, I'm going to say again, 180, take away 35, take away 75. And we are going to end up with 70 again. Okay, and the same reason, so angles on a straight line. And then finally, because we've got this is also equal to 70, you could then do angles around a point. Okay, so we could do all of these angles around a point have to add up to 360 and we would work out our B5 then. Okay, so we have to go um, B5 is 360, take away all of those angles. I'm just going to say all. Okay, so let's work this out quick. So 360, take away 70, take away 70, take away 75, take away 35, gives us 110. And that is angles around the points equal 360 degrees. Okay, and then just really quickly, they want us to prove that HL is parallel to KM. Okay, so they want us to prove that this line is parallel to this line. How we can prove that is I'm going to actually say, let's look at this F shape here. We have already worked out this is 35. So we can say, well, this angle and this angle, they are corresponding angles and they are equal. So that is actually all that we need for that one. So we can say, let's just get that angle there. Um, so angle H1 is equal to angle K1. So H1 is equal to K1. Which is equal to 35. And so then you can say corresponding angles are equal. And then you would say because, so then the lines are equal, so HL parallel to KM. I really hope that helped. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions.